Hello, I'm Delis Rowe. I'm chair of the IUCN Sustainable Use and Livelihood Specialist Group and principal researcher on biodiversity at the International Institute for Environment and Development. And I am here to present to you today a new framework that we've been developing with partners Traffic, Epic Biodiversity and the Endangered Wildlife Trust to investigate the sustainability of different wildlife uses around the world. The purpose of developing this framework is to, as I said, assess the sustainability of different wildlife uses. And this is largely in response to a perceived pushback against sustainable use of wild species, where it, it seems to be considered increasingly undesirable. Particularly, this is in response to COVID concerns with regard to the human health impacts of wildlife use and trade and, and calls to ban wildlife use and trade. It also responds to the concerns of animal welfare and rights organisations who consider that many uses of wildlife are bad for animal welfare. And it responds to the Convention on Biodiversity's new global biodiversity framework, um, which includes targets to ensure that all trade in wild species is legal, safe and sustainable. The framework development is essentially there as a proof of concept to develop something and test it against a number of case studies in order to see whether it's a workable approach. So what we've done is um, consider sustainability from five different dimensions. So we've gone beyond the classic ecological, social and, and economic dimensions of sustainability and also added in there human health and animal welfare. So we have our five different pillars or five different dimensions which underpin our framework. And for each of these five pillars, we've done a literature review and investigated what existing internationally agreed standards, principles, guidelines, or other guiding uh, documents are out there that set key requirements or key expectations for these different standards to be met in order to determine whether or not something is sustainable. Under each of our five pillars, we have synthesized down these international standards to identify seven key overarching principles. And then in addition to our five pillars, we have a number of cross-cutting principles, for example, alluding to the fact that all uses need to be legal, all uses need to comply with best practice. And we have seven of these cross-cutting principles as well. When you take this framework to a particular wildlife use initiative, so for example, a game ranch, a crocodile farm, uh, a, a, a reptile skin production unit, you have a tool, which is an Excel based spreadsheet, where each of these principles can be scored according to the assessor's determination of whether or not the initiative is meeting the principle. And you score each principle on a scale of zero to three, zero being bad practice, no adherence to the principle, and three being exemplary practice, going over and beyond the standard required by the principle. The tool then adds up all the scores that you um, receive across each of the different dimensions and it produces a result like this, this spider diagram, which shows you where you're performing well and where there is perhaps uh, opportunity for further improvement. And the tool also provides space for you to provide evidence of achievement against each of the principles but also where that achievement seems to fall be below good practice to identify actions that can be taken in order to improve practice. This framework has been tested against um, wildlife, wild meat production systems in Tanzania, against reptile skin production initiatives in Indonesia and in Zimbabwe, and against game ranching in South, Af South Africa. It's also been tested against various, various species use case studies that have been described in our species use database. We're currently in the process of writing up the framework and the testing results and reflecting on 
the how easy or difficult it has been to apply the framework, where we might need to refine principles, and where testers and users have experienced challenges and overall their feedback on the application of the framework and its usefulness for improving practice. We hope to publish these outputs as journal articles in the near future. We then plan to look for funds to roll out the framework or potentially a revised version of the framework based on the testing um, and apply this to as wide a range of species use initiatives as possible to really try and investigate in more detail uh, how different initiatives are matching up. Thank you very much for your attention. Please watch this space for further news on development of this framework and the results of the initial testing process. Thank you very much.